Mr. Poet Mata, Pro Chancellor, distinguished guests, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. In 32 years of roaming the business world, I have the privilege to deal with more than 1,000 MBAs and PhDs in various business fields. I still see a chance to address this gathering as a very rare privilege and a treat. A privilege because NUS is well on its way to the pinnacle of business schools in Asia and beyond. And a treat because in the next hour or so, each of you will officially commence your new life as young business leaders. In this, this is a precious moment that I could catch you with some of my thoughts from my own travel in the business world. People I mentored often come back to me 10, even 25 years later and said, the full meaning of what you said finally came clear to me. Other than being quite obtuse, I'm trying to help you do that sooner. I chose the acronym COMMENCE with each letter standing for a word and a wish for you in the journey ahead. C is for consciousness. The challenge of reaching our potential as adults, according to Robert Keegan, a leading expert in adult development from Harvard, lies in raising consciousness in those hidden elements in ourselves. Just like the adage, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So it is the same. You can't be at your best as a leader if you cannot be aware of your hidden qualities, good or bad. That's why having a mentor early in your career is critical because she would care enough to see the latent qualities in you that you are not even aware of. John Katzenbach, the author of The Wisdom of Teams, was such a mentor to me in my earlier career. In a client visit in 1987, Katzenbach told me, Sun Yen, one word sums up what you have, conviction. You speak from the heart, whether you know the subject or not. Remember and use it well, one word. Well, ever since that time, once I've become conscious of it, speaking from my heart becomes a strength of mine that I improved upon and use in every occasion I can. To be the best you can be, you need to become conscious of your hidden qualities and blind spots and deal with them in your developmental journey. O is for openness. In my work with chief executive officers around the world, I have found a strong predictor of executive failure in a closed mindset. When you hear, if it ain't broken, don't fix it, let's stick with the tried and true, mindsets like this are closed to new possibilities. They prevent timely innovation and could be downright dangerous when there's a sea change in their underlying assumptions. I wish for you to be open-minded and open especially to new experiences. No doubt new experiences can be very scary because they are either unfamiliar to you or they are uncertain. When I joined McKinsey in Canada in 1980, I knew no chief executive and nobody knew about McKinsey since top management consulting was a very nascent industry. And however, my first client CEO made a racist remark at me when I f was allowed in to attend my very first progress review. Hard to imagine how I could survive, let alone thrive. I learned quickly how to handle adversity like this and live to become the first ethnic Chinese and Singaporean to be a senior partner in McKinsey and the managing director of Canada. If we stay within our comfort zone, we will never discover enough 
learn enough new things to survive the many upheavals that are sure to attend the business world that you will encounter. Worse still, we'll miss the great opportunities to discover more of our hidden qualities, such as courage, which I'll come back to a little bit, that are unleashed only in a crisis. Not surprisingly, openness is also a dimension frequently used by me and others to assess the advancement potential of senior executives to the top of any corporation here and abroad. MM stands for multi-reference. It means more than mono-reference, so I'm a play of words to get two words, two letters in. We know that crisis and shock seem recurrent enough to stay for the duration of your career. Shimon Peirce, the Israeli president, summed it up by saying the last two decades had witnessed the greatest revolution since Genesis, and there is more to come. Crisis and shocks have one thing in common. We can neither predict the timing, the duration, or the magnitude of the impact. Since the sources of unpredictability often lies outside the scope of our analysis, we must establish multiple reference points outside our normal analytical domains to look for early warning signals. If voter sentiment is likely to be unpredictable, you go to the grassroots and sense the pulse. How do they perceive the incumbent? What are their worries? What are they frustrated at? In business, similarly, let's remind ourselves that the whole reality of what's out there had to be simplified or reduced in order to be quantifiable and therefore analyzable. Our models, therefore, often leave out important factors like viral behaviors, human technology interface, and change dynamics. So sensing rather than analysis at multiple external points must be a part of your mental habit. Go beyond shareholders to look at all stakeholders is a corollary of what I just said. So ask yourselves, how would the employees see this particular decision? Would this delight or dishearten your customers? How might the regulators react? And how would this impact the community, the industry, and the environment? Decisions thus made would be infinitely better than if we just look at shareholders. E is for energy, or more precisely, positive energy. I learned from my involvement in many major corporate transformations that sustainable change cannot happen without positive energy. And yet positive energy has never en entered the vocabulary of business education. Sure, you can compel people with fear and threat or negative energy to change a little for a while if you push them hard enough or threaten them enough. Carrot and sticks works a little bit better, but we are humans, not animals. It stops working when you hit them too hard, too often, or when they have had enough. Ultimately, change sustains itself only when there's a good purpose that people can subscribe to, that inspire them to set aside their discomfort and their fears to, to move ahead. Creating a sustaining positive energy, not surprisingly, is a hallmark of every single great leader that I have the privilege to meet. At a more micro and practical level, I challenge myself to impart positive energy in every person I meet in every conversation. The person who taught me used the phrase, are you filling my cup? It helps to think beforehand if I have every conversation. How do I want this person that I'm about to have a conversation with to think, feel, and do at the end of this conversation? It's not easy. I don't always succeed, but I'm still trying. N is for North, more precisely, true North. Some of you know what you wanted to do in life and may have landed jobs already that allow you to do so. I congratulate you. You are the lucky few. Most are either still searching or have settled for a job that pays, but not much else. You need to ask yourself, what is your highest calling? What are you passionate about doing? 
where would you be most fulfilled? I recall a business analyst of mine that all my partners were so impressed with him that we offered him to enter into associate uh, career with us, even without an MBA. He was very reticent, and finally he was sent to see me. To make a long story short, 17 years after he left McKinsey, he tracked me down in the streets of Paris, bought me dinner, introduced me to his, his family, and thanked me for being the only one who encouraged him to leave to pursue his passion because what he's passionate about, which happened to be music, is not something within the repertoire of McKinsey and Company. There are not questions like those that I've asked that are easy. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. I have encountered far too many MBAs these days that are five to 10 years out of school that are disengaged from their careers they were unhappy staying in their jobs. And mind you, these are top jobs with the likes of McKinsey, Goldman uh, Sachs, private equity, and so on, paying six-figure salaries to, to, to boot, and huge bonuses that we all know about. But these people are disengaged because they're unhappy staying in their jobs, but unclear what they wanted to do next. Some of them mentioned to me, this is midlife crisis advanced into their 30s. In speaking with some of them who all seem to be fast trackers in their first five years or so out of B school, I discovered sadly their hearts are no longer in their job and they have lost heart in the very institutions that they join. And heart was singled out by Sergey Brin, the founder of Google, whom I have the privilege to interview, to be the most important factor in his career. In a book that I co-authored titled Hearts, Smarts, Guts, and luck. We found that 70%, a whopping 70% of successful entrepreneurs and business builders did not start with a business plan. Rather, they started with heart, which is the purpose and passion to set aside other things to devote indefinitely in pursuit of the dream. Where your true north is, indeed, there your heart lies. For more insight, Please accept my apology for urging you to log on to hsgl.com or amazon.com to pre-order a copy of my book. <laughs> C is for courage. Your courage will be tested in the years ahead, regardless of the industry organization of job you get into. This is just about the only thing I can guarantee that you will encounter. Courage gives business leaders the guts to initiate, the guts to endure, and the guts to evolve. And nowhere is that more prevalent than in business building. It takes guts to start something when everyone around you advises you not to, that it won't work. Surely you will fail. Guts empower you to take that proverbial leap of faith into an uncertain future, risking your reputation and your money. After the startup, your guts are tested again to endure obstacles and setbacks. And it will help you remain strong and resolute, persevering when all others have given up. Finally, you know when to depart from the proven business model to reset or scale up at the right juncture. In writing the HSGL book, I became convinced that indeed guts can be nurtured. And that's the good news. To be more gutsy, in brief, you must start early, fail often, learn from those crises and, and failures, and have a supportive network of friends, spouse, and mentors. My final word for you is E as in ethics. You don't have to open a newspaper every day to know that ethical issues seem to crop up everywhere in the business world these days. The lines between what is permissible by law and the right thing to do seems to be getting more blur each and every day. The internet further exacerbated the burden on societies to grapple with new ethical challenges. 
but no governance or legal framework can dictate the individual choice that we make. As business leaders, we must set examples of ethical behaviour, and good ethics are based on sound morals. Just lest you feel that this has something to do with religion, let me give you a moral principle example that you might uphold, which is very basic. Treat others the way you like to be treated is an example of a principle that I adhere to in my entire career. So if you, for example, would be distraught when somebody steals your intellectual property, then start by learning how to respect other people's intellectual property. The age of plenty that I lived through has unfortunately been exploited and abused by fellow boomers, including myself or my generation, with little consciousness and degenerating morality. I sincerely look to you and your generation to not follow, but to reset the standards of business ethics. So here we are. These are my wishes for you then as you commence your new life as business leaders. Be conscious of your hidden qualities through lifelong learning and development. Be open to new experiences. Navigate the world with multi-referencing. Energize everybody you meet. Pursue your true north with purpose and passion. Be courageous to start, endure, and evolve your endeavors. And finally, please be role models in ethical behaviors that set new standards for the generation to come. Congratulations on commencing as new business leaders. God bless you all. <laughs>